Hey, welcome back to another episode of e-commerce on tap brought to you by Sourceify. Today I'm joined by Jeff Greenfield, who I would call the cookie king and not in the classic dessert sense, but Jeff is the go-to expert when it comes to attribution and analytics, which is key for any e-commerce brand to understand how they should spend their money. And so Jeff, I want to dive in right off the bat. Tell us your backstory in terms of how you became the expert in analytics and attribution and then we'll move on to how a brand should actually understand how it's spending money. Sure. I, I never jumped into this in the beginning. Years ago, I thought analytics and data was boring. I never imagined it would turn into kind of the sexy thing that it is today. But I was originally on the brand side. I did a lot of large scale events for companies like Verizon Wireless and some pharmaceutical companies. And then I had a client that was doing a lot of digital marketing buys. And notice that things really weren't adding up. They had this real problem where every sale that came in, they would have four mothers or fathers, meaning all these partners would claim credit for it. And that wasn't a cool thing. So that was back in the mid 2000s when the attribution problem first reared its ugly head. And I created a solution that would track the entire digital trail. You could see not only every single click, but every single impression. Uh, the company was called C3 Metrics. It was a big user by most of the large enterprise customers out there, scaled it up and exited there in 2019, thinking I would never go back to measurement, thought I had solved everything until about two years ago when I started to see what was going on with essentially the solution that I had built that served a lot of large advertisers was now not going to work anymore because without cookies, you can't string together the digital trail. You can't figure it out with the iOS problems and everything like that. Now all you can do is just capture the clicks that come to your website. And pretty soon you may not even know where those came from. So we're in a whole new world of hurt, a world that most digital marketers have never lived before. And that's what brought me to this day of creating a new company called Provalytics, which solves this problem, uh, but does it from a different perspective without the use of cookies. So how does that actually work without the use of cookies? Because I think that strategy might have come to fruition after iOS 14, if, if I'm right. And, and now obviously there's iOS 15 and who knows what version of iOS we're on right now. But at the end of the day, I think obviously marketers on Facebook and Instagram and across the board were really hurt by the iOS updates that started on iOS 14. And so I'm curious, how does attribution look differently compared to before before it sounds like you could just place a cookie on your website and now obviously you have to tie the strings together like you were explaining so i'm curious how does that actually work is there a big installation hurdle when a brand works with you what, what does that actually look like from a setup standpoint great question because before it was a big installation hurdle we would have clients that would go live with us and we would actually send our tag over to youtube Clients would do large-scale ad buys. We had tags that were live in Facebook and YouTube, even in Amazon back in the day. So everywhere someone would go, there would be cookies that would get hit. The nice thing is today, it's good and bad. With all the changes that are happening, we're limited. We cannot get user-level data anymore, and it's going to get less and less data. So we have to go back to the future. What are the things that are really important to marketers? Really what I want to know is where should I spend more? Where should I spend less? What is the incremental value that each of these partners bring? Meaning, if I didn't spend with them, how much money would I've gotten in anyway? What would the sales actually been? So what is that extra? What is that incremental value that they bring in? And the greatest thing is that the answer has always been right in front of us. There's a whole science called marketing mix modeling that's been around since way before digital that most large brands have built their businesses on. And it looks at what they call contribution. But it's all based about the incremental value that each of these partners bring. Now, I know when I say marketing mix modeling, everybody freaks out because if you've ever done it, it's a heavy lift. It's a huge project. No one wants to do it. And most brands, they should do it about once a year, but most of them don't even do it because it's such a pain in the butt to do it. And so what I did is that since I had built up a multi-touch attribution company, I knew what customers wanted. I knew what we liked, what we didn't like about MTA. I definitely know what we don't like about MMM and it was able to merge them together. So the installation is actually so much easier than it ever was before. All you need is you need to get data, historical data and current data from the marketing platform. So data that you would normally download from Facebook on a weekly or daily basis, that's the data we need from Facebook. 
Same thing for Google, same thing from GA, and then the same thing from Shopify or any place in terms of your conversions. And that's it. So there's no user level data. It's just daily aggregated data. The difference is that in order to build a unified model that looks at everything on the same basis, you need to have a unifying metric. So when you step back and you start to think about things like you look at GA and you say the unifying metric is clicks or clicks going to work. Podcasts don't have clicks. CTV don't have clicks. There's this whole new world of digital channels that I call no click digital channels. So the only thing you can use to unify is impressions. And luckily you can get impressions out of every single platform. So we just need daily aggregated impression data and spend from all the platforms and we're good to go. And really the magic behind it, I, I'd love to say it's AI, but it's part of the magic in AI. It's the fact that computer cycles move at such a higher rate of speed now it's so much more less expensive to get them to do so much more work when you compare it to two or three years ago. So we can do a lot more now with a lot less. And it's pretty amazing when you think about it. That's awesome. I'm curious, at what stage do you think in a brand's scale does this really matter? Is it when you're spending $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, $250,000 a month, a million dollars a month, $10 million a month? At what scale does attribution really matter for ad spend where you should have kind of a third party verification tool like you run to enable a brand or your team to really understand this is where my ad dollars really matter and this is where my ad dollars are having a, a strong impact right because from my perspective at a smaller scale if i'm just spending five or ten thousand dollars a month maybe the facebook ad manager is sufficient but as i spend and scale more across channels obviously attribution is a key. And so I'm curious, what's that unlock for brands that you've seen when having a third-party tool to focus on attribution becomes vital? It's a combination of both. It's a combination of how much you're spending and the number of channels you're across. You could be spending 10 million a month in just Facebook. And if that's 80, 90% of your budget, you don't need an outside attribution tool because Facebook does an amazing job of being able to optimize within their channel. It's when you move outside of Facebook. And if you're just in Facebook and Google, you're probably good to go, even as you scale up. It's when you start to bring in other retargeting vendors, and then you start to move to these newer digital channels like CTV and podcasts, things that you can't actually see anything on. But if you're in a bunch of different channels, and let's say you're only spending like 25 grand a month, it's going to be very difficult for a tool like ours for you to be able to get ROI because our tool is going to probably cost more than what you're spending. But that's where you need to start to get a little creative in what you're looking at. And what I mean by that is that instead of just looking at last click, you need to be looking at things like leading indicators, meaning as you're spending in one area, you should see an impact in others. So for example, I was talking to you earlier about a friend of mine that I was speaking to earlier today, and they cut some of their influencer spend out, which influencer spend and doesn't even show up in GA. But what happened all of a sudden over the course of the next month or two, they started to see leading indicators like Google brand search volume go down, organic traffic to the site go down. You can also look at things like impression share for your brand search term. You should be tracking those on a daily basis because as you're trying different things, or you get some PR, you want to be able to see what that actual impact is over time and track it. So as you're working across channel, but spending at a lower level, but for us, most of the clients uh, that we work with spend upwards of 10 million or more per year and are working across four or more different channels. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like most of those brands, obviously, if they're spending 10 million or more, they're in the you know mid eight figure mark, maybe low eight figure, depending on their target ROAS. I'm curious for brands at that scale, what do you see as the kind of go-to media buying strategy right now? So many brands want to get to that mid eight figure level that are listening in right now. And they're curious, how do I adjust or structure my media buying strategy to get to that point? You have so much insight and knowledge into this spend, just given that you're an attribution platform, you can probably see, hey, here's the best structure. This is the most common structure we see. So I'm curious, can you expose some of those secrets without sharing too much confidential information? 
I'll open the Komodo just a little bit. So the first thing is that with all the iOS updates, people saw all of a sudden overnight that Facebook, the value that they were driving started to drop because Facebook is blind essentially or blinded. And everybody tries to get their cappy up and running, but there's issues with that. But what I can tell you is that before the iOS updates, the people that you were targeting that were on Facebook, when the iOS updates came about, they didn't stop using Facebook. They're still there. So if your target market is women or men over the age of 45 in the US, and you're not spending the majority of your spend on Facebook, it's silly. They're still there. They haven't left. They didn't even notice the iOS updates the way we did. That's the first thing that chances are, if you're looking on a last click basis, uh, even if you're looking in Facebook, Facebook is probably performing better for you than what Facebook believes they are performing at. That's the first. The second is for those that are truly omni-channel that are also on Amazon, we're seeing, depending upon the brand, about a 20 to 25% halo effect from your Amazon spend. Now, what that means is that as you spend on Amazon to drive more people to your Amazon page, there's a percentage of those people that are going to say, oh, wow, this is really cool. I wonder if they have their own store. And then on the same side, we're also seeing a halo effect that as you spend more off of Amazon to drive people, let's say, to your own website or Shopify, there's a percentage of people that say, hey, let me go and see if this is available on Amazon. So there's that impact that goes back and forth. So those are two secrets that as you spend on Amazon, don't just look at your ROI on Amazon, look that same thing. I would also be tracking individual sales by day on your Shopify store to see, have you seen an uptick in sales as you started to spend more on Amazon? Most of you will probably notice that. Got it. Wow. Those are two incredible unlocks. I think so many people just dive into to one channel and don't really look at how one channel is affecting the other. And it's, it's such a unique insight because I think especially at that kind of six, seven figure scale, a lot of times you just have to find one channel that works. And so you're testing a bit. And then once you find that one channel, you can start scaling up and then maybe you feel like you've hit a plateau on that channel and you try to figure out how do I now expand? And, and, and typically that involves revolving into another channel. And it's interesting to see how at that eight figure mark, a lot of these brands are seeing attribution happen across channel or help uh, with other channels grow. I'm curious from your perspective right now in e-commerce, obviously we saw so much growth from COVID, right? COVID was a huge catalyst to e-commerce growth. E-commerce this year is still growing, but not at the same tick as it was. What do you think are the long-term outlooks for e-commerce as a whole? So many brands are facing different cash flow issues right now, whereas in the past they were facing supply chain issues. So I'm curious in general, what does your outlook look like in terms of how this year, 2023 is going to end and what should be brands be aware of next year? I can tell you, it's never about the best product wins. That's number one. It's always about who are the most innovative and the smarter marketers. Uh, the global uh, outlook in terms of digital ad spend is that it's going up. So if you're finding that you can't scale where you're at, you need to start getting a little bit more innovative. One of the most important things to think about is that 70 to 80% of the impact of your advertising is not where you're advertising at. It's not who you're advertising to. It's the messaging. It's your creative. Creative is the most powerful thing. So if you're not doing creative testing, you, you need to start working on it. And you need to start, you, you need to be starting doing some major A-B testing of landing pages and things like that. I will tell you a quick story. My, my daughter is in this space as well. She runs a programmatic and paid social for a large B2B agency on the West Coast. And she had a client that was a B2B, kind of a B2C client and very traditional, very short term in terms of seasonality to their brand. And they were getting to the end of their season. They were looking for something different to do. And she started thinking, hey, why don't we test some CTV? And so I suggested for her a very simple test and anyone can do this. Most brands today, they've got video. So if you've got a video ad, you can run a CTV ad. Just get it edited to the specs. It's so simple. And just go in your Google Analytics. Just look at where most of your visitors are coming from and pick one or two. And what I would do is I would just pick one city, just one city and pick a decent budget about maybe five to 10 grand and go all in over the course of three or four days in one city 
and just sit back and see if you see a lift in sales in that one city. Because then if you can do that and demonstrate that to your finance team or your CFO, then you can go in and get more budget and try it in other cities. And that's what's going to make the difference between a winning brand and one that's not going to make it through this economic season. It's really about the marketers who are willing to push the limit. And it's not about having the best creative on Facebook. It's about thinking outside the box and maybe testing in different channels and having that diverse channel mix really makes a difference. I love that. I love that. Awesome. Jeff, well, as we wrap up here on e-commerce on tap, the final question that I enjoy asking our guests is a time where they get to ask themselves a question. So if there's one question that's top of mind for you that you would like to answer, this is a time where you get to ask yourself a question and then answer it. I don't know if anything is uh, top of mind that you would like to share, but I know our listeners are very curious. I'd say top of mind, especially for growing brands, especially for a lot of these startups, is that you tend to be like all in on the brand, especially if you're a founder or a CMO. It's a 24-7 type thing. I know I did it with C3 metrics. So the thing I would ask myself is I would say to myself, hey, how do you work this for the long term so that you end up on the other end and you're still healthy enough to enjoy yourself and have a good life. That's really why we work our asses off here is so that we can enjoy ourselves on the other end. And the key to that is you have to have a couple of things in order. One, you need to make sure you get enough sleep. You got to get eight hours of sleep a night. I'm sorry. It's just a fact. So you got to get enough sleep. You got to make sure that you're putting the right food into your body. You got to be eating the right stuff. You can drink, but not so much. You got to just take it in light moderation. And then you got to take like a good 30 minutes, 45 minutes each day. And Kind of take time for yourself, maybe read something that doesn't have anything to do with the business. Right now, I'm reading a great book by Rick Rubin called The Creative Act. Awesome read. Has nothing to do with e has nothing to do with advertising. It's all about creativity. So I would say those things, make sure you're sleeping, eating. Oh, and then also, we tend to sit a lot at our these types of jobs. We're at our desk all day long. Make sure you're getting up, moving your body going to the gym, exercising. So exercise, eating, getting away for a little bit each day and sleeping. Those would be the answers to that question about how you make it through the long haul. Awesome. I love that. Jeff, well, thank you so much for joining us on e-commerce on tap brought to you by source five people want to get in touch or follow you. Where can they find you? I think go to provalytics.com or they can uh, find me on LinkedIn, connect with me there. I should also mention that as we talked about, this is a rapidly changing space. Things are happening really fast. We put together a attribution certification program for folks. You can enroll for free. Uh, it'll take you like maybe 45 minutes. You get a certificate for LinkedIn and that's available at attributioncertified.com or at our provalytics.com website. Awesome. There we go. Thank you again, Jeff, for coming on e-commerce on tap. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We appreciate any comment, like, share. It means a lot. And thank you again.